Hey YouTubers, I'm out here trying to fight the wind for you. During the process of pulling my exhaust manifolds to build my turbo hot side, I noticed that there was a lot of raw engine oil in my number eight exhaust port. So I had previously done a compression check on the engine and everything came out normal there. I must have somehow damaged one of the positive seals for cylinder number eight because all the rest of the cylinders have a normal amount of carbon or had good compression. We're gonna replace the valve seals on the number eight cylinder and just see if that fixes the problem. The entire time this thing was running, every so often, not every time, not even consistently, you would start this thing after it had been setting and it would puff smoke, it would puff out a cloud of smoke and then it would quit. And it didn't do it anymore. And then it would go a long time, not do it, not do it. And then lo and behold, you go to leave a store or something, you fire it up, puff of smoke, and it would quit, wouldn't do it. Never showed any signs of any oil consumption on the dipstick. But then uh, when I pulled those stupid exhaust manifolds off to try to start building the uh, turbo hot side, I was like, well, there's raw engine oil. Like you can see how clean that number eight exhaust port is because when I took my finger and just wiped that oil out of there it was just clean as a whistle and I was like okay <laughs> we have definitely got a problem with oil getting into cylinder number eight which it's good that I found it because that can cause detonation issues which as you would know if you're running a turbo or nitrous or some kind of power adder any kind of contamination that causes detonation can be can be catastrophic so all right, I moved the camera back a little bit so we could kind of talk about what we're going to do. Um, yes, I uh, kind of cheated a little because I had a good portion of this uh, engine bay and except, you know stuff removed because I was getting ready to try to do my turbo. I was installing those two-piece uh, seals using just like a 12-millimeter socket, which absolutely is not the best way to do that, and I do not plan on doing that anymore because the little uh, points inside of a socket whether it be six point or 12 point can damage your valve seals if you use that style so basically what i'm going to do is i have already hooked up a wire to my solenoid on the starter and bumped it around to where i know both valves are closed on the number eight cylinder so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull that valve cover off and we're going to start the process of taking all the rocker arms off because the valve compression tool I have, you have to bolt to the cylinder head where the rail sits. So that necessitates pulling all them rocker arms loose. All right, guys. Now, I did cheat a little bit because I'm trying to make this video fit on a in a reasonable amount of time. But I went ahead and pulled this loose. And what I did was just hook a, a, a alligator clip to my uh, S post or my small post on my starter solenoid and then I can just touch the battery positive battery terminal and bump the motor over until both intake and exhaust valves are closed on cylinder number eight now I'm going to get a, a ratchet or something start loosening all these rocker arms so I can pull that rail off and we can start disassembly to try to get those seals changed okay guys I wanted to just show you all you have to do take your spark plug out and shove a, a shop rag or paper towel as tightly as you can with your thumb in the spark plug hole. Sorry about that, didn't mean to bump the camera. And then you bump the engine over until you compression for that cylinder pops your rag out and both your valve springs stand tall, which means the rocker or the valves are closed. we are if you want to you can bump it again see right there nothing moved for cylinder number eight so now we've got the piston at the top of the cylinder and both valves are closed so you can service those seals and not have to worry because I will put compressed air in the cylinder but if something were to happen with your hose okay bust, so what I did was found top dead center or compression stroke let's say for cylinder number eight by verifying the compression pop. Both valves are closed. The rock arms are in the position to be removed. 
I will go ahead and add compressed air to the cylinder, but if something were to happen where I lost cylinder pressure, compressor dot blew up, hose got a hole in it, something were to go wrong, the valves can't drop all the way down in the cylinder. They can only drop down far enough to hit the piston, which you should be able to grab and pull them back up for reassembly. Um, another way people do this is they bring the piston up to the top of the cylinder, both valves closed, so it'd be on your compression stroke, and then they will just take a light rope and just shove rope through the spark plug hole, filling up the chamber area of your cylinder head so that the valves can't drop. So for any of you guys that don't have access to an air compressor or the fittings, the hoses, and the setup, to use compressed air, don't be dismayed. Just bring that uh, piston up to the top of the cylinder on compression stroke, both valves closed, and just simply put rope in the top of the cylinder until you're done doing your maintenance or your work or whatever you're gonna do. Then you pull the rope back out and move on to the next step. Okay, in the interest of saving time, I used a 3 8 uh, Craftsman breaker bar with the eight millimeter socket to break loose all the rocker arm bolts, then went through with just my little cordless drill and pulled them all the rest of the way loose so I can remove that rocker shaft assembly. See, this whole thing is gonna come out in one happy uh, piece. But I'm gonna do that off camera because I gotta block the shot in order to get a hold of it. So that's not worth looking at my back. So hold up a second. As I am, just like magic, rocker shaft and all rocker arms and bolts removed. So now we can move on to the next step, which is uh, compressing that cylinder with air and installing my valve spring compressing tool and start knocking out these positive seals. Okay guys, I've got my compressor tool on the valves. I'm compressing them down, fixing to pull the locks off. But as usual, it's really hard to work around the camera and not block the shot. The main thing is it don't drop anything. I've got these bead lock valve locks, which are high performance. But, if you look, what I've done is compress these down. I've got air going into the cylinder to hold those valves shut. So now all I gotta do is release this. Normally I use a cordless drill. But apparently today I'm retarded. Sorry for that, that's an offensive term. Normally, I like to use the... Let's see, you can pull this thing up. I went ahead and put rags down inside the head just to be safe so I didn't lose anything. Because, trust me, I am a fumble finger dude and I will drop something. These are the comp cams 918 valve springs. Kind of cool. They come kind of polished. All right, let me turn off the compressor. Okay, the two piece comp cam seals are absolutely hard to get off. So I'm having to work off camera. One's been changed. I got one to go. Stay tuned. Okay, guys. Both uh, positive seals have been replaced with the top hat style. Now I'm going to start assembling it back together. Which basically is just putting the springs back on, compressing them down, and putting the locks in. Alright, guys. Got the valve springs and the locks back on. I'm not going to lie to you. They fought me like Marvin Hagler. And, uh, I may have at least thought some cuss words, but I did win that battle. I did get it back together with the new seals, but holy, who thought it would be that much fun? 
So what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is pull the compressor tool off and uh, start the process of getting everything ready to uh, adjust the rocker arms because a lot of a lot of people don't realize is to guarantee your torque spec on your rocker bolts you're actually supposed to tighten those rocker bolts with the lifters on the low or what they call the heel or the back side of the lobe so you want both valve springs to be fully extended valves seated in the head lifters on the back side of the cam lobes before you torque your rocker arm bolts. I do understand a lot of people do it without this method and get away with it because <clears throat> I haven't done it the exact right way every time I've gone into these motors, engines, but I have heard horror stories where people were trying to figure out why their rocker arms were making noise and why, you know, and then turn to find out is because the stupid <clears throat> the rocker arm bolt had lost its torque or wasn't torqued to specifications like you know so why why take the chance of having a noisy valve train or or an even worse part failure so let me get that set up real quick all right guys what i did was set the rocker rail <clears throat> with all the rocker arms and rocker bolts back down on the stands got all the rocker arms made it up with its push rod then i just went around just went across and just snugged them all down with a drill then I started on the on the uh, intake valve on number eight and I followed the EOIC adjustment pattern to uh, torque them all to 20 ended up being like 25 foot-pounds I know they say 22 to 24 but I double checked my torque wrench and my quarter inch torque wrench set at 24 pounds was a tad light because when i double checked it with my little beam style torque wrench some of the uh canadian fellows might know it as bendy but uh i was just kind of verifying where my torque wrench was falling in so they're about 24 24 pounds and maybe a smidge more but i did follow the recommended uh, EOIC method to verify the lifter was on the back side of the lobe just to see if it makes any difference whatsoever you know in the valve train noise because I always felt like this valve train was a little noisier than it probably should be and I do know it has the right length push rods in it so I know that's not a problem I always chalked it up to either the brand of uh, hydraulic lifters I used or possibly those solid Straub industry uh, bushings in those factory rocker arms might be a bit noisier than a you know just a stock rocker arm would be. I don't know for sure. I'd have to research that. But I'm getting ready to throw the valve cover back on it and throw a spark plug in it and carry on my merry way with trying to get this thing put back together where it's at least drivable. <clears throat> the seals went on great. I had a lot of problems uh, with getting my tool back on to compress the springs to put them back together. But the locks went in good. The new seals went on perfect. You know, everything should be good now. Hopefully, I mean, I didn't see anything glaring as far as damage to the seals I took off. But I had to scar them up so bad getting the old comp seals off that I really couldn't tell if I did it today or if I messed it up when I first put them together. I just don't know. So hopefully this will take care of that oil in the exhaust port deal. If not, then I believe that we would be looking for some other kind of an issue with either, I don't know, cracked guide, I don't know, broken piston ring. I'm just not 100% sure what would be putting that kind of raw engine oil in the exhaust port if it wasn't the valve seal so um, I appreciate you guys watching I know I didn't get to get much on film there was a little bit of cussing involved and the uh, lighting and time was a little limited today hopefully I kind of followed and hit the high spots you guys know how I went about this and how you can do it too anyway thanks again for watching please like subscribe share hit the little bell then you got to hit the bell again and all that good stuff. Have a good one.